Uh, Mr. Lockett, as you finished off, you quoted from the Quran saying that you Muslims believed essentially all the revelations of the past prophets. Quoting from Abraham right through. Right. Right. And it's in that context that I wish to ask a question referring to Jesus yes. from that point of view. Right. Okay. Now I have in my hand a book called The Holy Scriptures uh, published by the Jewish Publication Society. The point I want to make is it's not a pro-Christian publication. It is the Jewish authentic scriptures. Right? Um, it, in fact, it has been authenticated by God himself in as much as the Dead Sea Scrolls which were discovered by a Muslim. And I think in that there is a very pertinent message to Muslims authenticating the very scriptures that Jesus said, I do not come to do away with the law and the prophets, I come to fulfill them. And Mr. Didad, you yourself said, if Jesus was here, if it was possibly a in person, he told you something, you would accept him because you knew he would not tell a lie. Right. So, in other words, I want to... Um, and can, amongst can, this, can, can you just ask the question? I will do. Please. I want to give the background because it's very important. I want to quote from the, the book of Isaiah, because it is one of the many scrolls that was preserved in the Dead Sea Scrolls intact. It hasn't been tampered with for 2,000 years. This is the point I want to make. It's authentic. It's original. Um, let's start at a point of Sorry agreement. to disturb you. Uh, you want to make some comments. You don't have a question for the speaker. I do. I do. Please, if we can get down to the question. I think it will make things much easier. Ask your question. Let the speaker answer it. Let's be fair to you as well. Are we having troubles here? Yes, everyone will get a chance. Everyone will get a chance. We're asking for, we're waiting for the question. Right. That is all. The it's as simple as coming. that. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a young woman, Alma, which can be also translated virgin, will give birth to a son. Now the Quran and the Bible both agree this is Jesus. And his name shall be Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. Just bear that in mind. We turn the page to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse... Yeah, it's coming. Right. All right, we'll give you a chance. Carry things. on. We'll give you a chance. Carry on. I thought that this was a goodwill meeting. Right. Uh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name is Pele Joez El Geboa Abi Ad Sa Shalom. And at the bottom there's a note here. That is, wonderful and counsel is God mighty, the everlasting father. This little child, this little boy is going to be the everlasting father. We turn the page for one last quotation, then comes the question, and I thank you for your patience. In Isaiah 53, we read these words. And their iniquities did he bear, he bore their sins. Because he bared his soul unto death, he was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Mr. Didier, you asked the question, where did the Christians get the idea that Jesus was God? Which is what we mean when he said he was begotten. He was God that came in the form of a man. Now, my question is this. The Jews themselves are expecting God in the form of a man as their Messiah. Why then does the Quran, which claims to have its roots in this very book, preach a different Jesus? That's my question. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, let me correct my brother Spate. The Jews were not expecting the Messiah as a man God. They had no such idea. The word Messiah, I gave you an idea that this is a very common word used in the scriptures. I gave you from the very book that you were quoting just now from the book of Isaiah. I said that Isaiah chapter, 40, chapter 45, verse 1, Cyrus, a pagan, a polytheist, an idol worshiper, God Almighty calls him Messiah. If he calls a pagan, an idol worshiper, which is the greatest sin to these monotheistic religions like Judaism, Christianity and Islam is to associate any beings with God. This Cyrus was a pagan and idol worshipper and God calls him Messiah and he says, I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. You, a pagan, you don't know me, but I still surname you Christ. So 
a pagan can be Christ and pillars can be Christ. No, in your book, you want me to give you references? Pillars. Pillars are anointed. Are they made into Messiah? Pillars. Pots and pans. I gave you reference of pots and pans. In the book that's given to you, all the text is given. Pots and pans are anointed. Anointed in Greek Christos, which is Christ. In Hebrew, Messiah, pots and pans. Pot, Christ. Pillar, Christ. Priest, Christ. It's all in your book. Then you're quoting me about the, this prophecy about Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is a name. Emmanuel means God with us. And he shall be called Emmanuel. I am asking learned men of Christianity who call Jesus Emmanuel in all his 33 years. Give me one reference. Who called him Emmanuel at any time? Who called him Almighty God? Who? Who called him so? Nobody. Did he say I am God? Did he say worship me? On the contrary, he says I, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. He says, see, the word you hear are not mine, but the Father that sent me. He had given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak, even as the Father had said unto me, so I speak. He says, of that day knoweth no man, no, not the angels, nor the Son, but the Father in heaven. In what way is he claiming equality with God? Where does he say, I am God? Where does he say, worship me? There isn't. I'm saying, where did he say such words? Nowhere. To the contrary, he's saying, my father is greater than I. My father is greater than all. I don't know whether it means what he says. If anybody called him God, called him Jehovah, Emmanuel is nothing. This is the name. You have Emmanuel Cathedral behind your, your chemist. Emmanuel Cathedral. You see, you have thousands of people in the book. You find hundreds there, L-I. In the Holy Bible. L-I, E-L-I, L-I. You remember Jesus on the cross is supposed to have cried out, L-I, L-I. You know how many allies are there in this book here? Jews. Allies, how many? Dozens of them. Allies. Means my God. The name is my God. If your name is L-I, you know what it means, my God. Am I saying you are my God? Look, here in the book, how many allies have you got? E-L-I. And yet, Jesus is saying, ally, allies, calling to those Jews as his God. No, these are names in language. Emmanuel means a person who is a godly person who is ever thinking that God is ever with him in his behavior. That is what it means. It doesn't mean he is God. The Jews didn't have any idea of God's incarnate, the God coming to earth as a man. Messiah means the anointed one, the appointed one. That's all. He was appointed by God to be his representative, to bring them back to the path. The Muslims are telling the very same thing. He said, look, this man is not God. He is a Messiah, yes. But what does Messiah mean? Go to the root. The root word means anointed, means appointed, officially appointed by God. That is all. And every prophet, you read some of these terms we take. And we give it specifically, exclusively for certain persons. Every prophet of God is an anointed of God. In Hebrew, Messiah. But we use this term exclusively for Jesus. The word Rasulullah, messenger of God. In the Quran, Moses is described as Rasulullah, messenger of God. Jesus is described as Rasulullah, messenger of God. But ask any Muslim, when he says Rasulullah, who is he talking about? He's talking about the Holy Prophet Muhammad. So what about Moses? The Quran says Rasulullah. No, this word is exclusively used in that sense for Muhammad. Though Moses is the messenger of God, Jesus is also the messenger of God. We say Abraham is a friend of God. Are all the other prophets his enemies of God? No, but exclusively we reserve that term for Abraham. Moses is an interlocutor with God, one who spoke with God. Didn't Jesus speak with God? Didn't Muhammad speak with God? But we use that term exclusively for Moses, that he spoke with God, though all prophets spoke to him. Likewise, this word Messiah, every prophet of God is a Messiah, is anointed, appointed, consecrated. But we use this term exclusively for Jesus. I don't see anywhere where this man says, I'm God, or where he says, worship me. This is what I want.